Hey, good morning, church. How many identified a fear you have this morning? Right? Yeah? Yeah? A few? Um, I, I'm here to tell you that the perfect love of God may not cast out your fear of spiders, though, just so you know. I just told Aaron I'm still afraid of that spider. <laughs> that thing was creepy. So, hey, I hope your heart has just been uh, blessed. Worship team, you rocked it again this morning. Thank you. Can we just uh, give it up for the worship team? Yep. And just by way of announcement, just want to tell you that uh, we have a special party planned for Aaron and Rachel Buer on October 28th. So if you have given us your email and allowed us to email you some information about your church and kind of or about the church and let you know what's going on around here, uh, October 28th is coming up and just a chance for us to celebrate Aaron and Rachel together. So make sure you. Uh, uh, come to church and then be ready to stay after for a little uh, little party. And uh, maybe we'll do a roast as well, you know, should we? <laughs> <laughs> Only in a place where they love each other. Yeah. Hey, uh, if you have your Bibles, uh, get them ready because we're going to be going all over uh, the scriptures this morning. We are talking about antidotes to fear. That's the title of today's message, Antidotes. Uh, to fear, and uh, whether you found one of your, uh, your fears in the, uh, in the little video that showed or not, nothing strikes fear like a pandemic. Nothing strikes fear when a, a, an infectious disease or a contagion just breaks forth, breaks out, and fear sweeps over people because they don't want to uh, get that. And uh, there's so many, I'm a movie buff, I'm a movie geek, and uh, love old movies, love all types of movies, and uh, how many of you have seen any of these movies? Outbreak, Contagion, World War Z, like we cannot show the, the movie Contagion in my house because my daughter's so afraid of germs, like she would freak out and have a panic attack that would last for like a month, so, but these movies are all, <laughs> yes, <laughs> you heard me Alex, you would. But in these, uh, in these movies, there is a pandemic, an infectious disease breaking out. Fear sweeps over the people, and it spreads. And as the pandemic spreads throughout the world, the fear continues to grow, overcomes, until what happens? What saving grace comes? They find what? The antidote, the cure, right? They find the, the medication, the, uh, the uh, prescription specifically to cure that pandemic and to eradicate uh, and and fear, fear releases and peace comes back. Well, when it comes to the real world, fear is the pandemic. Fear is the thing that is the epidemic that is sweeping across the world. In fact, we are a people of fear. And that's not just in our day and age, though we are characterized by a great deal of fear. That has been throughout every age that has lived upon this earth. Fear is a pandemic. And today, I, I tell you, we have the truth of God's word that is the antidote for that fear. How many of you want to know and, and, and experience truths in your life that will help the fears that you wrestle with, the fears that you, you hold deep down, they will just help them to release, help them to, uh, to be displaced and be replaced, in fact, uh, with the truth uh, that, that saves our souls, that frees our souls, and that brings peace to our souls Again, and so if you want to hear those today, I gra grab your Bible and uh, let's learn how to apply uh, these antidotes. So uh, first one here, if you're taking notes, write this down. Uh, God's presence is an antidote. God's presence is an antidote and it eliminates fear. God's presence eliminates fear. If you go throughout scripture and just look for the words, fear not. Fear not, fear not, fear not. You will hear that so often. You'll hear it said by uh, angels. You'll hear it proclaimed by prophets. You'll hear it spoken of by the Lord himself when he says, fear not, do not be afraid. You do not need to be afraid. Why, he says, fear not. And more often than not, that phrase, the, the phrase that follows is, for I am with you. The Lord said it to Isaac in Genesis 26, 24 when it says this, and the Lord appeared to Isaac the same night and said, I am the God of your father, Abraham. Fear not, for I am with you and will bless you and multiply your offspring for my servant Abraham's sake. Or in 1 Chronicles 28, 20, uh, David said to his son Solomon, 
Then David said to his son, Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid and do not be dismayed, for the Lord God, even my God, is with you. He will not leave you or forsake you. Second Chronicles 20, 17. You will not need to fight in this battle. Stand firm, hold your position, and see the salvation of the Lord on your behalf. Do not be afraid and do not be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, and the Lord will be with you. Isaiah 41, 10. Isaiah uh, speaking forth the words of the Lord. Fear not, the Lord says, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Isaiah 41, 13. For I, the Lord, your God, hold your right hand. How awesome is that? Just pause on that one for a second. A little bit different sense of the presence of God that he's saying, I, the Lord, hold your right hand. How awesome is that, that, that you feel like, man, I have no strength because this fear is just overwhelmed. It's causing the inner self, uh, the inner life just to cave in around me. And God's like, nope, I've got you. I've got your hand. I'm holding your hand. I'm not letting go. I am with you in the midst of this. The presence of God eliminating fear. Isaiah 43, 5, he says this, Fear not, for I am with you. I will bring your offspring from the east, and from the west I will gather you. Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 8. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you to deliver you, declares the Lord. Jeremiah the prophet was told to prophesy the words of the Lord, and they wouldn't be words that would be easy for people to hear. And so Jeremiah's like, I'm going to get a lot of enemies. People are going to like me when I speak these words, and the Lord's like, I am with you, and I will deliver you. In Jeremiah 46, 28, he says, Fear not, O Jacob, my servant, declares the Lord. For I am with you. I will discipline you in just measure, but of you I will not make a full end. The Lord is with us even when he's disciplining us. Hear that. The Lord is with us in the midst of discipline, right? When, when we as wayward children walk into sin or press into sin, and the Lord brings his hand of difficulty and dif uh, discipline into our lives, and we're experiencing what it is the hand of God against us, and we're like, man, this hurts. And man, I feel alone. And God's like, no, I'm there in the midst. And I have never left you. And a loving parent does not leave a child. Even in the midst of discipline, though there is that distance that is created by that loving dis discipline, God is still in the midst. And, and, and he is reminding his children that he is there. Haggai 2.5 uh, the, the prophet says uh, of the Lord, My spirit remains in your midst. Fear not. And Matthew 14, 27. But Jesus spoke to his disciples saying, Take heart. It is I. Do not be afraid. How, how awesome would it be just to have that experience that Jesus shows up in the midst of your fear? How many think that your fear would just like be gone in a moment if Jesus showed up? He's like, I'm here. Savior of the world. In the, in the house, you're like, oh, this is awesome. Like, what do we need to be afraid of? Jesus is here. John 14, 26, 27. Uh, Jesus gave us a, uh, an indication of what was to come and what we as believers experience now. He said, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. And we have the abiding presence of the Spirit of God living within us as children of the Most High. And in all of these, one of the antidotes, one of the greatest antidotes throughout all of Scripture to the fear that we wrestle with is the presence of God. Do you feel that? Do you know that? You know, children know that their parents' presence dispels fear, right? From a very early age, they know that a, a loving parent is safety, right? Now, we talked about a, a little illustration with one of my sons last week, but everyone knows the, the, the experience of a child who is afraid, child who is fearful, and what do they do? They, they either, I mean, sometimes they just freeze, right? We know that experience, but when, when they have just the strength to, like, kind of shout out, what are their words, right? It's either, Dad! 
or mom, right? Those two words are like the, 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 the keys to safety, the keys to peace, the keys to protection. And so in the midst of that fear, I run. As a child, I run, right? My, uh, my daughter, I heard uh, my daughter told my wife something this week that really blessed my heart but, uh, but really speaks to this. It, it, she said uh, they were kind of talking about like the whole like, um, all the survival shows that are on TV. And um, I think they were probably talking about a specific one. I don't know which one specifically, but they were like, what do you think would happen? Like, how, who would you want? If you could only have one person to be with you, like, who would you want to be with in the midst of, like, being out in the middle of nowhere and out and all alone and all afraid? And, and you know what my daughter said? She told my wife, she was like, I'd want to be with Dad. I'm telling you, as a, as a, as a, I was a proud papa right there. <laughs> I totally was. I was like inside and like, yeah, because I mean, what is it, man? It's like we want to be the hero, right? We want to be, we want to be like, yeah, Dad's gonna take care of anything. I don't care if we're in the middle of the desert. We'll find water. I don't care where we are. We'll find food and shelter and fire. We'll make fire and I'll be like, we will make as we will survive, right? I felt good. Children get it. Parents bring safety. Parents dispel fear. And they run to their father. They run to their mother in the midst of their fears. And when it comes to us as children of the Most High, when you are wrestling with your fears, when you are feeling them, and when they are overtaking you, and I don't care if it's just a little bit of a generalized anxiety that, that seems to come and go, or if it is as great as a fearful panic attack that is overwhelming you, the presence of God is powerful in the midst of it. And child of God, run to your papa because he is protection, he is safety, and his presence is there for you. And we have some beautiful truths that we just heard that, that, that the Lord is with us, but God's presence eliminates fear. Do you know this in your heart? Have you experienced this in your heart, in your life. Some of you are saying, well, if God's presence um, dispels fear, if it eliminates fear, I, I've got a lot of fear and I want to get rid of it. So, so what does that look like? Where do I go to find the presence of the Lord? How do I experience that? Well, number one, we have to understand as the children of God that we are never alone. We are never out of the presence of God. If Jesus is ours by grace through faith, then we have the beauty of the, the, the Matthew 28 verse of Jesus where he says, For lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. And so there is a beauty that, that the Spirit of God, the Spirit of Jesus rests in us, and he is with us. And so at all times, the Lord is with us. You know what? That is something that we can say as followers of Jesus Christ, that, 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 the, that our neighbors just outside, they don't have that blessing. They don't have that benefit. They live their lives. They live and experience fear. And for them, they have nowhere to run, nowhere to turn, nowhere to go except for what? For us as followers of Jesus, we have his presence with us always, always, always. Do you believe that? And not only believing it and saying, yes, I believe he's with me, but then there's a trusting of that presence. And there's an active faith, an active believing in the moment. And when you are fearful, and when I, I just encourage you, the next time fear starts to overwhelm, just say, Jesus, I know that you're with me now. You said you are with me always. And so maybe you just even sit there and, and by faith, just begin, begin to let, let your creative imagination go and just, just picture yourself sitting right next to Jesus. Picture him sitting down next to you or standing with you. Picture him getting up. I can tell you, like, many times before I have to get up to preach, there's an anxiety, there's a fearfulness that rises. Some of that is the fear of just wanting to serve the Lord rightly, wanting to love our people goodly. But at the same time, there's a fear that rises up because it, I want people to like me and maybe they won't like me. Or, or I'm afraid of, of standing in front of people because, you know, maybe my fly's down and everybody's going to be laughing at me. Or, or, you know, the dream of like you're standing in your, in your underwear in front of everybody and that fearful dream that you have, it, it's just standing in front of people, talking in front of It's one of the greatest fears we all have. 
But one of the great things is just to be able to recognize that Jesus is with me. That as I preach and I stand here today, Jesus walks with me. And his presence is in this place. He has not left me. He is with you right in that seat, but he's with me as well. And he is speaking his word to you today. His presence eliminates fear. Do you believe his, his presence is with you? But also maybe, maybe you could just apply this by seeking his manifest presence in his life. Scripture teaches the manifest presence of God as well. And, and it tells us to seek his presence continually, scriptures say, to seek that manifest presence where God shows up and God is in the room and his presence is felt, his sense is known. God's presence, his manifest presence is available. You say, how can I find that? Where can I find that? Um, number one, when you go and you go to, we said it earlier in, uh, in January, we talked about Moses going to the tent and we talked about our quiet times as being like that, tent time. You know, when you get alone, you go to your prayer closet and you go to seek the Lord. Guess what? Many times in that moment, how many of you have found that, that, that God's presence shows up in a powerful way? You're breaking open the word and suddenly one of the verses just begins to pop off the page. And it's like, this is for you today. You need to know, you know, or, or maybe it's just a word of love that the spirit speaks to your heart as you are seeking the Lord in quiet. Sometimes you just have to get alone with the Lord, and so you seek the Lord. Now, his manifest presence doesn't show up every time. I wish it was that way. I wish I could go and the Shekinah glory just showed up in my closet every morning. No, it doesn't happen, but sometimes it does. Another place is in worship, in worship. Scripture says that, that he inhabits the praises of his people. He dwells amidst the praises. You ever wonder what happens? It, it, you just come to church sometimes and you're just like, man, I feel like I'm in the presence of the Lord. Or there's just those holy moments. I mean, sometimes it's just rocking and you're like, oh, this is really great, great music. And then all of a sudden, like the spirit of God just descends through a song and you're like, you are a good, good father. You, your name is a strong and mighty tower. And you feel his presence in the room as God's, God's manifest presence is making himself known to his people. I will tell you, like, that dispels my fear so often. I had a, I had a woman come up to me uh, today, and she was talking to me and just telling me about her week. She's like, you know what? I can't, I can't tell you how much, like, I've just been, like, ha having worship on all week, all week, all week. She's like, this is one of the greatest weeks I've had in terms of my struggle with fears and anxieties. It's like been nowhere. And that's because worship is so powerful. When the manifest presence of God shows up, like nothing settles our hearts but to know that God is near. And he's saying, I'm, I'm here with you. This is not just some community gathering. This is not just some mob meeting. This is a holy moment where the spirit of the living God is. And when God's presence shows up, fear must flee. God's presence eliminates fear. So seek his manifest presence. Maybe in your, your, your prayer closet, maybe in your tent time, maybe in, in worship, maybe, maybe just seeking some people out. I love how Jesus said, where two or three are gathered, there am I in their midst, Right? And that was specifically talking in a context of, of a church discipline passage. But, but there's something special that happens among believers as well. And that's one of the avenues that God uses to show his presence. Sometimes you just need that good word that Proverbs speaks of. You know, anxiety weighing down the heart of man. But a good word is like life to the soul. You need that good word and you've got to go around, brothers and sisters. Sometimes you just need, you need a physical presence. I need to be with Derek today because you know what? I'm so fearful and anxious. And, and knowing that the Spirit of God dwells in him, dwells in me, there's something that the Spirit just utilizes through that and, and the manifest presence of God. And my, my blood pressure begins to dissipate and my fears begin to melt away. And it's awesome. One of the antidotes to fear is God's presence. Trust that he is with you and seek his manifest presence in your life. And you can watch your fears disappear. Here's another one. A perfect love. Perfect love. Perfect love eliminates fear as well. Go to 1 John 4.18. 1 John 4.18. It's near the back of your Bible. 
So if you're kind of going uh, with, you know, go all the way to the last book, which is Revelation, just walk a few book, books back and you'll get to 1 John. 1 John and then chapter 4, verse 18 says this. There is no fear in love. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. Perfect love casts out fear. That Greek word for perfect there in, in the English is uh, a tilias. Tilias. It means fully matured or completed. Or uh, the, the word that's used, John uses it four, uh, five times in, uh, in this book alone. And he's talking about this perfected aspect of love, right? And some of us think of God's love in us and, and God's love. Why, why would God's love need to be perfected in us? I mean, isn't God just, if he gives his love or shows his love, isn't that perfect in and of itself? Well, understand the fullness of what he's saying here when he's talking about full love. And, and, and you want to know this perfected love in your life. Because it literally, as it says, it casts out fear. And, and like we were talking about uh, a few weeks ago, um, this word, casts, the NIV uses the word drives. I love that. It uses the word drives because this word is aggressive, right? This word is forceful. This word is like when, when so your fears are raging. Just feel it right now, right? Be fearful. Not really easy, but you remember those times when you just like, you can't calm down, you're feeling it, it's raging, it's, or it's just kind of like a low simmering in you, and you're like, where is this going? And then, and then the perfect love of the Lord comes into your heart and floods your life. Guess what it does to, to that fear? It doesn't just come and go, hey, excuse me, fear, hi, it's great to see you, I'm, I, I, would you please move out? I, I tell you what, I'll show you where, where you need to go. Let me, let me kind of help. No, no, come on back here, fear. Come on, we need to go now. No, it's like, get out, fear! You can't stay here because God loves me. And that's what it is. It is forceful, and it's casting it out. It's getting rid of that fear, like some of you are af afraid of me right now. <laughs> You're just like, Pastor Mike, take a chill, would you? Right? That's fearful, right? But when I understand how much God loves me, and when that love is perfected in me, when it becomes fully mature, fully completed, it drives out fear. So some of you want, want some perfect love in your life, right? How do I get that perfect love? Anybody wondering about that? Well, love is perfected in you when you first, when you know, believe, and live in God's love for you. When you know, believe, and live in God's love for you. Verse 16. Go back to verse 16. It says this. So we have come to know and to believe the love that God has for us. God is love. And whoever abides in love abides in God. And God abides in him. By this is love perfected with us so that we may have confidence for the day of judgment because as he is, so also are we in this world. Now one of the greatest fears that we all have and we all should have is the fear when we stand before the Lord. There's a, there's a right sense of the fear of God that, that we should all have of saying, you know what, I'm going to give an account for my life. But here's the great thing, because of God's great love and how did he demonstrate that great love for us? Christians, how did, how did God demonstrate that great love for us? That Christ died for us, right? And that's exactly what he's talking about already. In verse 9, he says, In this the love of God was made manifest among us, that God sent his only Son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the propitiation of or the, the atoning sacrifice that appeased the wrath of God towards sin. Jesus took all of that wrath and be, was the propitiation for our sins before the Lord. So love is perfected in, in you. It's perfected in me when we begin to first know that love, right? And you have to hear that. You have to hear the gospel. Now, for most of us, you've, you've heard that good news. You've heard that, that Jesus came to, the, to earth 
that, uh, that he took on flesh, he lived a sinless life, he died upon the cross for the sins of all humanity. He uh, was buried in the ground physically, rose again victoriously, and now he lives to make intercession for all who would put their faith and their trust in him. Now, it's a beautiful truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. If you live in America, one of the great things about our country is you can't go very far without hearing the gospel. The gospel is very plentiful in this nation. There are many people who still need to hear it, so keep sharing. But most people know. Many people know. So you have to start by knowing. Second, though, not John says, we have come to know and believe to trust in that love that has been sent for us. You have to trust that that act of Jesus was a personal act of love by God Almighty, right? You have to believe, you know what, that, that when Jesus came, when Jesus gave his life for me, that is a demonstration to me just how much God loves me. When it uses the word propitiation, that big you know, theological term that John is using, He's basically saying Jesus was in your place taking the punishment that you deserved and all of the wrath and all of the fury a holy and righteous God has towards sin was poured out on Jesus. He poured it out on his own son so that you could be, uh, be forgiven and that you could, be go, you could go free. That is an amazing gift. And why did he do that? Because he loves us. Can you believe that today? Can you believe that truth? And by, by believing it, you are receiving that for your own hearts. And I'll tell you, that's not something you can do in yourself. But sometimes that is something that even though you've put your faith and your trust in the Lord, sometimes you need to believe the love of God as well. And, and Paul prayed for the Ephesians that they would uh, be rooted and grounded in the love of God and that they would come to know it in their full being so that they would know the full measure of God's love. When you know that love and when you believe that God fully loves you enough, that begins to dissipate the fears in your life. Because you know, you know what? This God that I thought was an angry ogre in the sky, this God that I thought was against me and just wanted to bring pain and suffering into my life, this God, no, 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 that God has been with me all along. That God has seen me all along, and that God loves me through it all. And it changes. You begin to know, you begin to love, or believe that love, and then you be begin to live in that love as well. John said this word, abide. Whoever abides in uh, love abides in God, and God abides in him. The idea is, is living and dwelling. And, and I, there's, a, um, there's a Hawk Nelson song. And uh, it's a, I love the song because it, uh, it, it says, live like you're loved, right? If, you've, if you listen to Caleb at all, it, it, they play it every once in a while on there. But it's a great, let me just share some of the lyrics, how they, how they say it. Uh, the chorus is this, so go ahead and live like you're loved. It's okay to act like you've been set free. His love has made you more than enough, so go ahead and be who he made you to be and live like you're loved. Live like you're loved. Live like you're loved. Live like you're loved. <laughs> it's better when you're actually singing it, right? And the, the bridge is live like you're loved. Walk like you're free. Stand like you know who he made you to be. Live like you're loved, like you believe. His love is all that you'll ever need, right? No, the idea of the song is not like, hey, live like you're loved, even though you're really not, you know? I mean, that's where my mind goes. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute, live like we're loved. Should we put on this act and just pretend? No, no, no. Live like you are because that is truly who you are. And so you have the freedom to live in such a way. So the next time your fears rise up and you feel alone, remember, hey, my Heavenly Father loves me. And while this thing may seem very fearful, I know he's with me in here, I know he's got a plan for me, and I know he cares about me enough so that even if I have to go through this fearful thing, I know that in the end it is going to be great because God wins and I'm gonna be with him 
and eternity, we're going to be looking back at this, and it's going to be this great, grand worship offering to Almighty God, right? That's living like you're loved. Having a totally different mindset, having a totally different perspective in the way in which you live and look at the world. Living like, uh, living like love, like you don't have to earn it. It's just given because that's the love of God. That is the grace, the gracious love of God. It's not something you got to perform. Some of us, if, if we don't perform, if we don't perform, we feel uneasy. We feel fearful and anxious. And so if I'm not living up to the standards, whether in my own mind or everybody else's mind, we feel like we're not enough. And that, that was one of the things I was just trying to practice that. So while we're singing, I'm like, I just got to live like I'm loved no matter what, whether I'm singing, whether I'm not. And so I was in the back and I just sat down. I, I just stopped singing. I stopped singing. I'm like, I'm just listening to everybody else. I'm like, Jesus, I'm not here to perform today. I'm just here and I'm loved by you. And that was helping dispel some of the fear that I have before I get up to preach, right? And, 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 and I'm, dis, I'm just living in that. I'm so living in it. In fact, I, I, you know, I must have tuned out or something because I blew a big bubble with the gum that I had and popped it in the middle of worship. I'm like, that's totally irreverent. <laughs> Anybody who sees this pastor is going to be like, what a lame pastor blowing bubbles in church. But his love isn't because of how I performed. It's because of how Jesus performed. And he loves me even when I blow a bubble in church and I'm like, ugh, shouldn't do that, you know? He loves me even when I sin and I fall again and again, even though his grace has been sufficient for all of those and he'll forgive me. He loves me still. And it's like the love of a parent. Like there's not, man. There's nothing my kids could ever do that would make me love them more or less. I just love them. I love them. Don't you feel that, parents? You're just like, it just flows out of you. You're like, I just love them, right? Don't get me wrong. I don't always like them. <laughs> but I always love them, right? And that love casts out fear, right? Even in the midst of discipline, even in the midst of difficulty, it casts out the fears in our life. So no believe and then live in that love of God for you. But the love is not perfected at that point. Can I tell you that? It's not matured to its fullest or completed to its fullest. God pours his love into you, and then we respond and we return that love to him as well. And that's the completing of that love. That's where that love is perfected. And John talks about it earlier. In 1 John chapter 2, he says, uh, he says in verse 4, he says, Whoever says, I know him, but does not keep his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoever keeps his word in him, truly the love of God is perfected. By this we may know that we are in him. Whoever says he abides in him ought to walk in the same way in which he, he walked. Right? So one of the ways I can experience the love of God in my life and open my heart for more of that love and see that love perfected in my heart is by walking in accordance with his word. And as I obey his truth, my heart opens up for more of God and more of his love. And I experience more of his love. And he sees that as it's completed, as I'm giving him my worship, as I'm giving him my devotion, and I'm offering to him my obedience towards his ways, right? And that is how love is perfected when I love the Lord. It's interesting that the, the first and second commandments are the, uh, in, in Scripture, the greatest commandments. To love the Lord your God with all your soul, uh, might, and strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself. Those are the two commandments that John is going back to again to perfect this cycle and this circle of love. He says to love God by obeying his word. It reminds you of what Jesus said when he said, who is the one who loves me? He who obeys my commands. He it is who loves me and will be loved by my Father, right? Our love shows and demonstrates when we obey his word, it, sh it shows and demonstrates that love for God and it's returning that love back to him, his love. And then in uh, 1 John chapter 4, he talks about it as well in a further aspect. The second uh, commandment, the second greatest, um, in verse, uh, excuse me, verse, uh, verse, starting in verse 10. 
He says this, in this is love, not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God if we love one another. God abides in us or God lives in us and his love is perfected in us. That's another way that the love of God is perfected. So not just that God loved us, but then also that we love God and we begin to love each other. And as we do that, as we love other people, the other people in our lives, the annoying ones, the, 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 the non-annoying ones, the helpful ones, the very unhelpful ones, the ones who are everyone, as we love people, that love of God, that, that cycle and circle of love is completed or perfected and matured in us. And we are being permeated by the love of God. And as we do that, fear goes away. Because fear can't remain when love is perfect. And that's the beauty. Like one day, when we die as followers of Jesus Christ, we're going to stand before the Lord, and we are going to be, uh, we're going to stand before him. Jesus is going to welcome us into his presence. He's going to put his arms around us, and we're going to have no fear of that day of judgment. Why? Why? Because we will know perfect love to its fullest. Right? And we will stand before the Lord. We will stand with boldness and confidence. And yes, our sins will, will, will be read before us. You know, they'll be the screen and we will know. And there will be the tear that comes from down our eyes before, because of those things. But at the same time, in the depths of our hearts and with Jesus standing by our sides, we will know that we are loved. Because he'll say, forgiven. Because the only reason is Jesus. And Jesus is going to come over and he's going to wipe that tear away. He's going to be like, enough. Enter into paradise. It's going to be awesome. It casts away fear at judgment, but it casts away fear in our lives. Some of you in your life, when you're experiencing fear, some of the, some of the best things you can do are obedience to the Lord and loving the people in your life. And it's almost this, this sense of if you are participating in the love of God and this perfecting and completing work of the love of God, and as you do so, as you go on the offensive in love, fear begins to disappear from your heart. Fear goes away. So next time you're afraid, go, where's someone I can love? <laughs> Where's someone I can care for? Where's someone I can help? Where's someone I can serve? How can I be a blessing in someone else's life today? And as you seek that, sometimes that fear will dissipate. Maybe it's an, maybe it's an obedience thing. And maybe you need to get some help, or, or help from a friend and, and, and a loved one. Just let them, uh, let them love you a little bit and help you get some victory in your life. Or begin to follow God's laws, his ways, his word. As you do, love is perfected and perfect love drives out fear. It eliminates fear. Are you fearful in your marriage? Try loving your spouse. Maybe, maybe you love your spouse. Try loving Jesus more than your spouse and telling your spouse no because you have to tell Jesus yes, right? Are you fearful at school? Find some of your friends that you can love. Why don't you go into school with different eyes next time you go to your high school or your junior high or middle school, wherever you're going. Why don't you go in rather fearful of what they're going to think of you and how you go in on the aggressive sense and go in to go, how can I love someone today? How can I serve uh, my friends who are at school? How can I find somebody who's sitting alone and go care for them today? Go sit with them at lunch or something. Go on the offensive and watch the fears be eliminated in your life. Perfect love is an antidote to fear. Receive God's love and give God's love. All right, here's the last one. Number three, the gospel eliminates fear. The gospel eliminates fear. In and of itself, the gospel itself eliminates fear. Right, go to Hebrews, if you would. Hebrews. I don't hear pages turning. Are you just really quiet page turners or are you all using your, uh, your, your digital Bibles right now? Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 19 to 22. 
Now, the author to Hebrews has been just writing how Jesus is supreme and how Jesus is awesome. He's better than the Old Testament covenants that were, that were in the Old Testament. He's better than the Old Testament promises. He's better than the Old Testament priests. He's better than the Old Testament sacrifices. He is the best of all that God has. And Jesus is the epitome of the gospel as he gave himself. And I shared a little bit of that gospel as well. Here's another passage that expresses it. And notice the, the, uh, notice the, the boldness, the confidence that we have through these verses. Verse 19, Therefore, brothers, brothers and sisters, since we have confidence to enter the holy places by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way that he opened for us through the curtain that is through his flesh. And since we have a great high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith. That's the beauty of the gospel, that Jesus provided the sacrifice. All the Old Testament sacrifices, all the old animals, the blood that was shed was for the forgiveness, the covering of sin. Jesus offered his blood instead. And in the Old Testament, the priests were the ones that would be a mediator between, between them and God. They needed a go-between, right? Jesus is our priest today. That is a beautiful picture of what the gospel of Jesus Christ is. And to trust that Jesus' blood made sacrifice for your sins to cover you, to cleanse you, to forgive you, to believe that he is your high priest and that he ushers you into the presence of God. That dispels our fear. That gives what he says. We have confidence now because of what Jesus did. I can have confidence. And so I can enter into God's presence. I can enter into a relationship with the Lord in fullness of faith because of the gospel. And that fear that we have that keeps us away from the Lord, that goes as we believe and trust in Jesus. How many of you have heard the name uh, Louis Zamperini? Louis Zamperini, he was, a, uh, he was an American Olympian he was also a, uh, a World War veteran. His aircraft was shot down, spent 47 days floating in a raft at sea until the Japanese found him and during the war put him in a prison camp. And there he learned what fear was like he never knew before as he was regularly routinely beaten and tortured day after day after day and for him when he came back my wife and I uh, just saw the movie Unbroken Path to Redemption and that whole movie that's out right now I mean it's an amazing movie you want to definitely see it but the whole movie is about what it was like after he got back from the war. And he suffered from, from what's known as PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. He struggled because he was gripped with fear. And while he, the war was ended, his battle was just beginning, right? And while his captors were gone from physical sight, his captors lived inside in his own fears as he continued wrestling and it drove him crazy nearly nearly ruined his marriage drove him to an alcoholism that destroyed them financially destroyed their life and he could not break free from those fears couldn't sleep at all during the nights and he just happened to find himself, his wife invited him to go to a Billy Graham crusade in 1949 in Los Angeles. And it was at that crusade that he heard of God's love for him. And he heard of what Jesus did for him. 
and he heard that even in the hardest of times that God would allow his love would see him through those things and it was upon hearing those things and believing those things that he finally could face his his captors his abusers he could face them and he could forgive them for the torturous fear that they inflicted upon him and it was in that moment that he bent the knee to Jesus and in forgiving them received the forgiveness of God for him and the blood that came into his life of the perfect love of God like it doesn't always happen like this but God set him free from those fears that day. He would go on to say that that night he had the best sleep of his life and he never had trouble sleeping that, from that time on. He never saw the faces. He never felt the fear because the perfect love of Jesus was filling and moving in him as he put his faith and trust in what Jesus had done for him. The gospel eliminates fear. Have you received that in your heart today? Because Jesus wants to set you free from that fear. What are your fears, loved ones? Friends, what are you, what plagues your soul? What is the pandemic? Of fear in your heart Jesus has some antidotes that he wants to apply to your heart today let's pray as you bow your head I want you just to offer your fears to the Lord God I'm afraid for my finances right now. I'm afraid of my spouse's health. I'm afraid about my child, keeping them safe. I'm afraid for their future. I'm afraid to reach out to my neighbor and even talk to them. I'm afraid of my mom. I'm afraid of my dad. Just offer that to him. Say, Jesus, today I need to apply some antidotes from your word to these fears. Maybe for you, you need to receive Jesus for the first time. You would say, Jesus, I want to embrace the love that you have for me. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for sending your son to die on the cross for me. Fill my heart with your love. I offer you my fears today. Maybe some of you have some perfect love to do in your life, to receive in your life. Or maybe it's just being here and knowing and just resting that God is near. Father, dispel our fears as we apply these antidotes by faith today. Our fears seem great, but you are greater. Our fears seem present, but God, you are more abounding than any of them. Dispel them in your time, in your way. We pray today. Amen. Amen. Let's stand together and sing.
you're a Christian doesn't mean you won't be afraid. Alright? That's not the truth that we're saying. One day, one day we will not be afraid because we will be with Him in eternity. I look forward to that day.
fears will come in this life, but they don't need to stay. That is the beautiful promise of God. His perfect love, His gospel, and His presence are antidotes. They drive out the fears, and they are available for you today. Hey, we've got some leaders who would love to help you dispel some of those fears. Maybe you need someone just to speak some good words into you. The leaders will be up here afterwards. There will also be some in uh, the very back uh, room to the left there, our, uh, our prayer room. Uh, we would love to meet with you, encourage you, strengthen you in the, the love of Jesus today so, so that you don't have to be afraid. C3 is happening next. Christianity, culture, and conversation. This side or this side? Over in, uh, over in the Grace Kids Preschool side afterwards, all are welcome to come. Have a great week and be strong in His grace.